are back live from the LinkedIn Hub at Advertising Week right here in Times Square, day two. And as you can see, we were chit-chatting before our interview. I'm chatting with Ron Young, who is the founder and CEO of Showcase, which is the first professional social network designed specifically for marketers. And you were telling me a little bit about it. This is a big deal. I mean, and this fits into this whole building your brand online kind of thing, which you're talking about in one of the panels. And it's very interesting. So tell me a little bit about how that works, how you build that brand like that. Well, so my quick background, um, you know, Showcase, we launched it eight months ago. We've raised $21 million. Um, there are 25 employees in San Francisco, including four PhDs. And we are now, uh, we now have just north of 50,000 members. And we're in eight months. Yeah, in 124 wow. countries. And people are basically building their brand. An online brand is as critical now as online presence. And um, with Showcase, you can basically showcase your work, showcase your talents, showcase your work history, and we keep track of all the tags and keywords that are used in your resume. So that when somebody's hunting for, you know, somebody who understands organic orange juice for the aging market in, um, you know, Maine, they can find just the right marketing person using Showcase. You can't find that person on Google right now. You'll get somebody who wrote a book about orange juice, or you'll get somebody who has a service to sell, but you won't actually find the person. And if you go to LinkedIn, you won't either. We have the benefit of being a specialized vertical for the marketing world. Mm -hmm. And with how important it is to have a very specific, distinct brand right now in the online world, I mean, you can't even... You know, you can't, you can't get anywhere without that right now. I think it's really important, the fact that you're using technology to help achieve that, right? Yes. The, the average marketing person goes from job to freelance project, freelance job, and project, project, job, job, project, job, job. Marketing people change uh, their client or job frequently because there's a need for new creative thinking in marketing all the time. You know, the story about the... Uh, the guy who walks into the CFO's office of Coca-Cola and he says, who's your audit for Hellingen? and how am Hellingen to keep him? And he says, are you crazy? That's a dumb question. Get out of here. I've had the same Ernst & Young for 20 years. I'm going to keep her 20 years. Not changing to my watch. He walks next door to the CMO. He says, who's your ad agency? How are going to keep him? He says, that's a dumb question. How'd you get on my floor? We've had 20 ad agencies. Uh, they've each got 30 studios. They've got 100 freelancers. And we've had the longest one for 20 years, the shortest one for 20 days. Get out of my office. i got a meeting in 20 minutes. We're looking to change. <laughs> Marketing people, there's always a need for new creative energy. And so you've got to be able to package yourself online. And we make it easy. Mm -hmm. So another thing I know you're also talking about on a panel is the importance of storytelling. I've been doing a lot of interviews and talking to a lot of people about how to kind of cut through the noise right now and reach consumers in a different in a different way rather than just, you know, I'm going to interrupt what you're watching to tell you how great my laundry detergent is, you know. And so I want to talk a little bit about the importance of storytelling in order to break through the noise to the consumer and have kind of a more emotional reaction. So the g most genius advertising and marketing period is that which converges great story with great technology. And uh, we really use technology to tell persuasive stories. And that's the essence of what marketing people do. And so you've always got to have a story. Stories are older than words. They're older than scripts. They're older than books. And when I say they're older than words, what I mean is that essentially giving somebody an emotional experience, a hug is a kind of little mini story. And you can basically, uh, you can tell a whole story with very few words, and it's emotional. People decide with their gut and rationalize with their head. Why did you decide? I tell you. How did I decide? I really kind of liked or didn't like something. So story is incredibly critical. Uh, one of the reasons why I think we're growing fast is because you can tell your stories by putting samples of your work and arranging it the way you want on mm -hmm. your so another thing I want to talk about is a little bit more about that intersection, that intersection between storytelling and technology, because the technology is moving so fast now that it allows people to really tell the story, it allows marketers to really tell the stories that are then relevant to their consumers. So what do you think is, is the general trend in, in technology, or how is technology now best being used to tell those stories and to be relevant to the consumer? So let me answer that question with a story. So, oh. you know, five years ago, the CMO of Abercrombie & Fitch's little 14-year-old daughter comes home and says, Dad, you're a genius. 
On the way home from school, my friend and I, we stopped by the mall, and as we walked down the aisle, we smelled this smell, and we're drawn in a direction, and we got close to heard the music, and we walked into the Abercrombie & Fitch store, and the people were wearing the clothes, the, the, the workers it's looked like the models. The experience was fantastic. I loved it, Dad. You're a genius. Okay, that same guy, he's got a younger daughter. She's five years younger, and she comes home yesterday, and she says, Dad, you're losing it. What's happening? We have to sell the house? What's going on? <laughs> he says, what do you mean? She says, Dad, I took a shortcut on the way home from school yesterday. My friend and I cut through the mall, and I'm going along, and I'm thinking, hey, she's going to get me with the coolest stuff from Abercrombie and & Fitch. And, and I looked, and, and my phone vibrated, and, and I know I belong to the, the club, and I know I had range. And I look up, and, and I got this image of the brown pair of the black shoes I bought from Forever 21 last uh -oh. week. Uh-oh. Oh, and, they, and, they, and that was <laughs> using, you know, the database. They know what size I am. They know what SKUs I bought. They know what kind of clothes I bought. I'm belonging to the Forever 21 club, and they're within cellular range. They're basically using four different technologies, you know, the Internet, big data, social, and mobile, to sell me something. Now, that's a much more effective piece of advertising than a billboard even in front of the store. Right, absolutely. And I think that is a big trend with, uh, with a lot of people we've been talking about. The ability of technology right now, not just to get information about the consumer or about the, the, the buyer, it's just, you know, age, sex, you know, who you are, even what you like, but especially with mobile, we're able to get so much more information, like where you are right, right then and there, you know, and everything, what you've been looking for and all that stuff. And, and, and best using that, I think, has to do with timing. I mean, the story you told is a perfect example. So how do we maximize that? And who do you think is really getting it right and not getting it so right? So remember what you said a minute about story. It's always better, really, to cause them to smile about your product. Smile first. got to like what's happening. And if you can base, if they're they're going to be a shoe buyer and you advertise when they're close, that's geo. So you got to have geo uh, sensitivity. And you already know that she buys shoes. And so I don't want to advertise to him. I want to advertise to her. So relevance is a big deal. Uh, you could try to show me all kinds of compelling images. But if I'm not going to be a potential buyer, if the purchase proposition doesn't fit what I want, you know, so that's one of the geniuses about our modern technology. Marketing, as we've interfaced more and more and more technologies into the marketing r realm uh, and integrated them, it, advertising gets more and more and more uh, effective and more and more appropriate. That is to say, matching up the target audience and the buyers that target audience at the moment they're in the purchase decision. The peak buying moment is when I'm close enough to say yes uh -huh. and I see just what it is that I want. And um, you know, I know why I want to buy it, so I basically can choose your product. If I, you know, I don't want to really try to sell you clothes after back to school. Right. It's better before back to school. Right. And I don't want to sell the wrong demo clothes. I think the psychographic is just as important as the demographic. Essentially, attitudes um, uh, influence everything that we're doing, and our attitudes affect our commercial decisions as much as they do other decisions that we make. And if I'm if I'm prone to like you know, um, hip clothes, right shoes, you know, desserts. Mm -hmm. Right, desserts. Well, who doesn't Dessert? like desserts, though? Well, <laughs> no, some well. people are no, more prone to buy desserts. Yes, I know. No, I like that, um, you know, obviously knowing the psychographic element is, is incredibly important, but I'm also hearing from you, and I and I seem to have gotten this from a lot of different situations, the timing is really important. Reaching Absolutely. people, And that's why the technology has to be keeping up with it so quickly in order for me to capture the buyer and the consumer at the right moment with the right story. Because if you miss that small window, it's done, like you said. Yeah, well, so part of the use of technology is to use technology that can actually grab your attention at that right moment. So you want to be timing right, and then remember that augmented reality is going to be very big in 2016. It's an emerging force in marketing, as every new technology is. Remember, television really got explored. The fast cutting that you see currently in storytelling on television was first introduced in television commercials. Okay, and because we do so much work in terms of content in the marketing world, I'm going to tell you that augmented reality is going to be uh, featured in all kinds of cool ads. And if you're waiting in a bus stop and someone entertains you with an image on a wall that looks like you're looking through the wall with an image that's built into the wall and the changes in the wall, that's really, really, really entertaining. Now, if I'm waiting in this bus stop, this might be a good time for me to talk about Uber. This might be a good time for me to be talking about Lyft. Because I'm a person who doesn't have, a, isn't using a car right now, right, and I want to see alternatives to this bus that is near you. Uh huh. I love that. I love the augmented reality. So well, yeah, you that's the new trend. Yeah. Well, augmented reality, as every new technology in communications, usually gets pioneered 
uh, and used a lot in marketing before it hits as broad a commercial relevance. Because essentially it's bite sized. Remember that a TV commercial that costs a million dollars is gives you, you know, there's something that costs three and four and five, but that's way smaller than most movie budgets anyway. So it's an opportunity for people to see new technology and marketers have an opportunity for them to feature new technology to grab attention. Ron, thank you so much for letting us know all this really interesting information. I've wrote down some keywords that I'm going to keep in mind and learn more about, and I'm going to get on Showcase as soon as I get off. Great. Thanks, Mark. Thank much you fun so much, Ron. Thanks thank so much. Thank you. Thank you.